Hello, in this video I want to tell you something about the basic coloring techniques with Copic markers. When you start with Copic markers, it's important to know, to know which kind of paper and which kind of ink you use, because otherwise you won't have the result that you want to achieve. After testing more than 20 different kinds of papers, I came out with this paper. This is the paper that's perfect and also the name is perfect coloring paper. We use it always to achieve the nice uh, colors with our Copics. Another paper I use when I want to have another color than the white, because this paper only comes in this white, is the stamping paper from Papi Color. This is a little block with a lot of different colors in it. We have the off-white, we have the blue, we have the pink, a little bit yellow, a little bit green. This is a very uh, soft paper. And on soft paper, we will, t we will teach you that afterwards in another video, you need to have another technique, you need to have a dry coloring technique where you don't use a lot of ink, otherwise it will go out of the lines. In this case, today I'll show you my coloring on this perfect coloring paper. When we have the right paper, then it's important to use the right stamping ink. For the stamping ink, I always use the Memento. It's great for coloring with Copic markers. We have it in black. We have it in brown, when you want to achieve a vintage uh, outlook of your uh, images. And we also have it in grey. And I used the grey ink the last weeks because there is a new trend on the blocks. You see, people are coloring without black lines. When you color without black lines, you, don't, you, you do need a very light stamping pad. And that is the London Fog from Memento. I made some samples out of it. I'll show it to you here. This one, it's a stamp from Vilda Stamps. I got it from them during the Stample Mecca in Hagen. You see uh, how beautiful you can color without the black lines. This is one of their Ted stalls. Here is a little boy. And there are no black lines. It's very difficult to color because you don't have the guidance of the lines. You see with the gray memento you achieve this result. Now the coloring. The, on this stamping paper, this special perfect coloring paper, I also can print my uh, images with the computer. This is a stamp from, uh, from Wii Stamps. It's the little witch called Hazel. And I printed her out with my uh, inkjet printer. This is the end result of the card. I made it already, uh, the whole card. I will show you how to color the dress of her and perhaps the hair that I will, I will show you. Okay, I'll lay it down. Here is my, uh, my print. I did it on the computer. Uh, some computers you need to let it dry. Other ones you can color directly after it is printed. Please see what your computer does with it. Here are the markers that I want to use to color her dress. I start with the lightest one and then with the, uh, end with the darkest one. The basic coloring technique of Copic markers is from light to dark. It's like you are doing oil painting, you make a layer on layer on layer. I start with the lightest marker and I start at the place where my design should be the darkest at the end. Therefore I turn my page to make the coloring more easy. With her dress I'm starting here, there it should be the darkest. To color a whole area Please take your marker and make circles. It's, it's, it's like a base coat that I'm making now. You see, I don't have my marker this way, I have him this way. That I take the broad side of the, of the brush nail. I don't color the whole area. The part that should be the lightest at the end, you see it over here in the sample, this, this part should be the lightest and in the first uh, layer, I don't color that. Uh, YG40. Now I take my YG20, I believe. Yeah, it's a 20. And I start again here. I put another layer. The second layer, I never do it in circles. I do it this way. I will put it here to show you. I take my marker and I make it in a kind of a flicking motion. Feathering in, it's also called. I do this, then I can, because this way I can blend it more easily. 
You see, it's a little, slight little bit darker. I give a lot of pressure at the beginning and I'm giving less pressure at the end. Now I take my lightest marker again, this one, and I will blend it here. I start there where I ended with my YG20. I make small circles. After I made the circles, I go with. It's my second color. Now I take my third color, and that is the YG91. Starting again at this point and using the flicking motion. So it should be the darkest here. I forgot to tell you something. I did it already in my head, and because I, I made the sample. How do you know where you have to be, where your image has to be the lightest and the darkest? Therefore, you need to know where your light source is coming. In this case, my light source is coming from this side. And you see, when my light is coming here, and I have a more easy thing to show it to you, and that is a, a sheet, a plastic sheet, and I've drawn some line on it. This is my sun, and this, these are the rays of the sun. I put it over my image, so in this case, and there, where my rays uh, touch my image the first time, it should be the lightest part. There where they leave my image, they should be darker. When you see this, I need to make it darker over there because this area of the dress is at the darker side. You decide before you start the coloring where your uh, light is coming. I also could have made this choice, choice, that the light was coming from there. But I prefer to have the light at the side where the face is. Like a sunflower, people also are turning their head towards the sun. I did my job with my third marker. Now I need to blend it. And the only way to blend it is with the second color of the marker. And that is the YG00. I'll take it again. And I start in the area where my uh, YG91 uh, is stopped. And I make small circles to remove the, the particles of the color and then I go in this flicking motion and I told you I need to make it a little bit more darker at that side and you see it easily blends now I need to take my first marker again this one and I need to make it smooth over here also in this flicking motion it's to, to even the, the color particles it's a little darker. I need a little bit more dark over there. I, I use the YG93. Starting here a little bit, only a little bit. A little bit here in the plies. And I needed more darkness over here. You see, I do it this way. So, not circles. You hear the little child of Lydia who is making this video with me. And she also loves coloring. You hear she wants to color with me. But she has to wait a little bit. Okay, this was the third color. One moment. And now I take my second color to make it even over here. You see, it's layer on layer. And therefore... In this case, you get the depth you want to have. I want to have a little bit more darkness here in the plies, a little bit more here, a little bit here. And I also take the darkest one I use, that is the Jotki, um, nee, it's YG, Jotki is, is German, it's YG97. So, a little bit, you see, this gives a lot of darkness, very, very tiny strokes then I take my it is my fifth uh, one two three the fourth marker again oh. it's all about layering 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 small now I take my third one YG91 and you have to be patient you can add shadows more than one time 
When I do classes, people always think they only can make it one time, but you can make your shadows as often as you want, because you need to layer it. And you see how many times did I go over my areas and no leaking with a, of outside the lines. This is the final. What I don't do is with my lightest marker go over the whole area. People tell me, Dini, don't you blend that that way? And no, because when I do that, then my YG97 will become a YG95. I make it bleach and I don't like that. I need to have a little bit more of this. Every time I need a color, I use a color, I need to go over it with all the markers. Most of the time I hold them in my hands and I take the other one. Be careful that you don't take the dark one in the lightest areas because then you have to start all over again. Now you see one, this one, the last one. You see that you also can, in the very small areas, you can come with your Copic marker because our brush tip is very small. You don't need a smaller brush tip for that because with this big brush you can do every color technique you want. This is my result. You see this is the end result. It's similar like this one. I make my image a little bit bigger so that you can see it better on this video.